When you applied as a purser, you had an image of what the roles are, and then here you are, finally a flight purser. Mm -hmm. Are they different or are they the same? Were the expectations met? It's Apart amazing. from the salary, because I know you guys are paid well. <laughs> you guys oh are paid my well. God. My name is Mayville, and in our channel, we talk about lessons about life and even in career as well. If you're interested in topics like this, please hit like, click subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. Your expectations about the job. Finally, my first flight, not in the pool anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you feel? Some of my expectations were met. Not everything is 100%. But I would give it a high percentage because now you feel like I'm in control. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, this is my flight. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the one who makes the decisions. Yes. I'm the one who runs the show. That it, if anything goes wrong, to you. I'll be answerable. It's, you know, when you're pregnant, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you feel your baby kicking in your tummy. Yes. There's something that makes you mm -hmm. like feel really good about it. Mm -hmm. And that's how I felt as a flight passer. Mm -hmm. oh. Now I'm not in the pool. Now everybody will trust me, yeah. <laughs> including the captain. Now there are some expectations that were not met. Of course, you're thinking, oh, now I'm going to relax. <laughs> I'm in charge. I'm the boss. <laughs> oh, no, that's not the case. <laughs> Actually, people think as a passer you don't work, but mentally, you are really working because you don't want anything to go wrong on your exactly, flight. Yes. You, you want everything to be done and you're dealing with human beings. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. need to give satisfaction, mm -hmm. not only the, for our passengers, mm -hmm. also for your colleagues. Right. right. All the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We have engineers, we have the caterers. Yes. It's a wider, wider big picture. Correct. Dispatchers, the ground staff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A flight purser is the manager of the flight. Mm -hmm. So those cabin crew who are on the lower rank report immediately to her. Mm -hmm. And also, she's the one who handles the yeah. overall customer experience, yeah. sometimes even issues of the crew whatever yeah. happens yeah. so she carries all those weight yeah. and even handling as she said ground staff yeah. engineers all the stakeholders yeah how was it carrying that burden because That's, it's a lot <laughs> it it's is a lot. lot you know guys what i'll tell you is mentally you have to be prepared mm -hmm. because like i said at the beginning you'll be excited and think oh it's just being the boss mm -hmm. it's something big mm -hmm. uh, being in charge of all these things reporting to the company because if anything goes wrong you're the first one they will contact. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. What happened on this flight? It felt heavy, mm -hmm. but how I handle this, uh, you know, when you feel like, oh, I can't handle this, or I'm losing it, or it's like this, even before you take off, everybody is asking you this, everyone is asking you this. How I was able to manage is delegate. Mm -hmm. There are some things that you cannot do everything. You're right. There are some things you can delegate to your supervisors, even the cabin crew themselves. Mm -hmm. Guys, could you please help me with this? Can you please assist me with this? In a calm manner. Mm -hmm. If you start panicking, mm -hmm. you lose it. Mm -hmm. If you start getting nervous, you lose it. So what I do when I'm at home, because the good thing with Emirates is we get our rosters in advance, right? Yes. So you know every flight, Oh, on this flight, we know usually it happens like this. On this flight, we know it happens like this. So you mentally prepare. When you're mentally prepared, you're mentally organized. Yes. So when you reach there, you're ready to handle anything. Whatever comes your way, you're ready to handle. As a leader, never ever say, I cannot. Mm. Mm. You will lose everything. You lose your team. You will lose the trust of mm. everyone. Everybody, yes. And actually, it will hurt you yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two things that I just got from there. Yeah. One is it's okay to admit that you cannot do everything. Exactly. Because human as we are, we also have our own limitations. Yep. So being a leader does not mean you have to do everything yep. right there yep. or micromanaging something. Micromanaging. Like that. Yes. That's the word. That should have been. <laughs> so it, you know, it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. And that's where delegation comes because sharing the workload to others means that you also trust your crew True. that they can also perform. And they're so happy by the way when you yes. delegate. When when you say can you guys please help me with this mm. the crew are more than happy to assist you even the dispatcher even the ground staff mm -hmm. you know everybody they are so happy sense of responsibility but when you decide let me take everything by myself and then oh. you mess up people will be like hmm, yeah. see <laughs> and yeah. the second thing i got from you as yeah. well is mentally prepared mentally i think prepared. in everything that we do whether in our job yeah. or whether in our own personal life yeah we have to mentally, mentally prepare. prepare. Because when you're mentally prepared, you know what's ahead already. Yeah. You know, at least somehow you don't go in the battle empty handed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like going to the battlefield with no weapons. Yes. <laughs> so we'll dig deeper, Janet, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Since you are a leader and you've been a leader for so long, yeah. 
Can you tell me what is leadership for you? What is leadership? Let's think. Oh, that's that's a tough one. <laughs> tough and good as well. Leadership, I will repeat again. Most people mistake it. I'm a leader, so I'm a boss. Mm -hmm. For me, being a leader is a team player. Right. The moment you start having this power trip, mm -hmm. I say, when I walk there, if I meet somebody in the corridor, they should walk mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. then you're not a good leader. Okay. When you walk there and you meet somebody on the corridor, they're smiling at they you. Smile. Hey, Janet. Or they even go after their way, uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, hey, Janet, how are you? Are you okay? Have you eaten? Did you, you want some water? Yes. Then you will know you're a good leader. Mm -hmm. Being a good leader is being accommodative. Mm -hmm. Accommodate everybody's weakness, mm -hmm. the level of their career. Because not everyone is the same. I can have first class crew. Mm -hmm. Okay. One has experience for five years, one has experience for one year. But I cannot treat the one for, for one year like treating the one for five years mm -hmm. because they all have different levels same thing as in different grades you know mm -hmm. so being a leader is understanding your team mm -hmm. what are your responsibilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the moment you get this into grip everything runs so smoothly mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I like that as yeah. a leader as Janet said being a leader is not easy Right? It's not easy, but yeah. being a leader means first and foremost be a team player. Team player. You have to be part of the, the team. team. You're there not you ahead of the team. No. You're not behind the team or on the side. No. You are part of the team. Yeah. And then secondly, you have to empathize. Empathize. Because yeah. not everyone has the same experience. There As you, you said earlier, one has more experience, one has less experience. Yeah. You have to put yourself in, the, in, their, in shoes, their shoes. And then you must be approachable. Approachable, yeah. That's what I said. If they see you on the corridor and they run, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you know there is something that you're not doing and right. Yeah. If we can give them a perspective as to what happens before the flight. Mm -hmm. Because it's not that we just meet in the aircraft. In the aircraft. We do yeah. a pre-flight briefing. Yeah, yeah. So, couple of hours before the flight we go in the briefing room the purser is already there and the two supervisors are yeah. already there and we do a pre-flight brief oh yes so how do you set the mood oh. as a leader <laughs> so let me start i start myself from home like i said we get uh, our rosters in advance you know which aircraft sometimes it changes of course but mm -hmm. in rare cases you know which aircraft you're going to operate in so as a passer we have to send a pre-flight email so pre-flight emails basically means you're introducing yourself to your team we have this portal in Emirates where you have the names of your team, introduce yourself, send an email and give them the positions. That's for flights that we slip over, layover flights, yeah? For quick turnarounds, you don't have to do that. So that's how you set the mood. How do you write your email? I remember before I became a pastor, I could read an email and I'm like, oh, Jehovah, God help me. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this, this is yeah. what happens, you know. You, you can already say, so, oh, is and it happens not only in flying, yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in the offices, yeah. yeah People yeah. working in the offices, you just read an email and, like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's how I set the mood. You know, greet people, introduce yourself, where are you from? These are your positions. And I'm looking forward to flying with you. If you need to pass anything that is uh, operational, you know, we have other things that maybe the company tells you to share, just put small lines. Mm -hmm. You don't have to bring the whole manual mm. in the email you know what i mean <laughs> like they have to read a book <laughs> yeah now it's time to to go to work mm -hmm. of course the leaders are the first ones who are in the briefing so that's the flight passer and sometimes we have two supervisors if it's boeing triple mm -hmm. seven or you have three supervisors if it's airbus 380. 380. okay so you do the uh, leadership briefing just amongst yourself and also that's when you get to know your leaders mm -hmm. these leaders they are my supervisors, yes, but don't lose grip of them. Mm -hmm. They are the ones also who will assist to run the f a smooth flight, you know. So set the mood with them as well. Put your expectations with them. Mm. Tell them this is what I expect, blah, 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 blah. And we need to support one another. Mm -hmm. Communication. Communication in airline is essence. Communication. Keep that in mind. If you encourage your seniors to communicate with you anything that happens in flight, they need to pass that message also to the, the, the team that they are managing in their sections. So the flight runs smoothly. So you get to know everything. You yes. know, they have a picture of what's happening in your flight. So then the crew will come. We do the pre flight briefing. We are given only 10 minutes. We have to ask safety questions. We have to discuss other operational things, which if I mention to you, will be wondering what I'm talking about. Mm. But those are the things we discuss. And then we also discuss about our customers and the destination where we are going. Set the mood. Mm. You know, you don't have to be there stuck up. Guys, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. No, no, no. 
as a leader get your own leadership style mm. get your own leadership style where you're not losing your team mm. there's a way when you stand in that briefing room yes. you will know am i losing their interest mm-hmm. or am i actually gaining them mm. if people are laughing and actually keeping an eye contact then you know wow i have them and that's what i like to do in my briefing i'm sure if mm. anybody who will watch this video and flown with me they will tell you i do that and after my briefing my leadership style is I give a quick motivational speech just okay. a small line you know mostly I've seen you're doing finances mm. you know how don't you know when you're growing up and you're still young don't waste that yes oh. one day gone is gone you'll yes. never get it so yes. I tell the crew when you come to work don't only think about my job mm-hmm. how about yourself because mm-hmm. most of the time you forget yourself so it. I'm going to work to make Emirates happy mm-hmm. or only to, also to make myself happy right you know that gives you the satisfaction mm-hmm. in whatever you do. Mm-hmm. I like that because there is a briefing that's full of tension. There's yeah. also a briefing that, you know, you leave the briefing and you know, like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes. And I always appreciate pursers like yeah, that. Yeah. When you motivate, you know, when you motivate and you really lift up the crew. L- lift them up. And it's not an easy job. It's not. Because sometimes you go to work at one o'clock in the morning, yep. three o'clock in the morning, you <laughs> have not slept before the flight, <laughs> and you. here you are in charge to really uplift. Yeah. So it's not easy. That's yeah. why you're doing a very good job, Janet. I'm glad at least you know um, I managed to get my leadership style, and it's really worked for mm-hmm. me. We can already see that Janet is one of the you know best flight pursers out there and her values really you know are very infectious she makes sure yes yeah. that her positivity gets to be distributed to yeah. the team that she's working with yeah. Yeah. now my question janet is as a leader now that you have a grip of how you will lead the group and how you will unite the group together yeah. how did emirates train you as a leader how did we train as a leader Mm. Because it's not easy. As you said, it's not an easy. What you undergo to become a leader for Emirates, it's not easy. For me, sometimes I, I feel like actually being a leader is not trainable. No, <laughs> it's, it's either within you it's or not. It's in, inside you or it's not inside you. <laughs>